In this video, we're going to be focusing on understanding the concepts related to projectile motion. Projectile motion is a unit that can be difficult to understand, and the calculations can get pretty complicated, but they are much easier if you really have a good foundation of the concepts. So first of all, you want to make sure you have a good foundation for understanding free fall motion in one dimension, as seen in this picture over here. If you do not have a good foundation in understanding free fall motion, then make sure to click this video first and watch it thoroughly to understand free fall motion before continuing on with 2D motion. All right, so when something is kicked and then moves in two dimensional motion, um, basically saying it's moving over horizontally and moving vertically at the same time, it's considered 2D motion. All right, now as the ball is being struck, it's being struck on an angle up and over this way. Now, if it's being struck on an angle, part of that force is directing the ball upwards so that it can rise up above the ground. And then part of that force is directed horizontally so that it will move horizontally down the field. Now, the way both of those work are completely independent of each other. That is the biggest, most unique fact relating to projectile motion is that the way that it rises and falls and the way that it moves sideways are completely separate from each other. Okay, so now let me elaborate. So if you just think about the vertical motion of the soccer ball without thinking about how it is moving from left to right, we know that when something rises, it starts off with its maximum vertical velocity and it decreases its velocity the entire time to the peak because it is moving upwards and the force of gravity is pulling downwards the entire time. And obviously those are in the exact opposite directions. As it's falling back down, it is speeding up the entire time because force of gravity is now working in the exact same direction it is moving. Okay, so if you are just thinking about the vertical motion of the soccer ball as it's moving up, it does slow down towards the peak and then speed up towards the ground. Now, if we think about the horizontal portion of it, that is actually completely different. It moves at a constant velocity. Okay, now you might be asking yourself, well, the ball isn't moving at the exact same velocity as it goes up and over from left to right, which you're right but the amount that it moves over every second as it's traveling through the air is the exact same distance, okay? So as it's rising and falling, this rising and falling basically gives the ball a certain amount of hang time. Now that hang time is the same exact hang time for the horizontal motion. So as it's hanging that air for a certain amount of time, it's just gonna scoot over the same amount every second. The reason being is there are no horizontal forces if you're neglecting air resistance. So all of this motion is because of the initial kick and now it has inertia, the tendency to keep on doing what it's doing, which is scoot over sideways some as it's rising and falling. So let me go ahead and move to the next screen where we can merge these two ideas together. As you can see in the middle here, now we have all of our main ideas. As it's moving from side to side, which obviously could be going up and over to the right or up and over to the left, depending on which way they're kicking the ball, there are no horizontal forces. When something is in projectile motion and it's moving up and over, there is only FG, the force of gravity pulling it straight down. That doesn't affect how fast it moves left and right. Therefore, it has no change in velocity moving from left to right. Because there are no horizontal forces, it continues horizontally due to inertia. So I got an initial kick that bumped it over, up, and to the side, and then the amount of horizontal velocity, we'll just go ahead and give it a number of, we'll say two meters per second, is gonna be exactly the same. So for every second it's in the air, it's gonna scoot over two meters horizontally down the field for every second it's in the air. For the vertical component, that is completely separate. We know that as it rises and falls, gravity is for sure going to slow it down as it's rising, and that's gonna speed it up as it's falling. Velocity is always increasing or decreasing. 
Now, the thing that really trips people up is there's two completely different things happening, but there's only one ball. So really what you're doing is you're basically combining the two and then that's the result of what you're actually seeing. Okay, so it is rising and scooting over. And what do you actually see? You basically see the resultant of these two vectors. Okay, so if you actually did want to break down the forces, or excuse me, break down the velocities in that triangle, it's basically like working out a triangle in geometry. If you had um, this number over here, I'll go ahead and put 10 meters per second then the hypotenuse of this triangle would be the actual velocity that you're witnessing. All right, so as you're moving along, you are basically just combining that vertical and horizontal component together, and then that's what's actually happening to the ball itself. Now you can see my purple arrow is starting to shrink because my red arrow is starting to shrink, but my blue arrow is staying constant because my horizontal component is moving at constant velocity. At the very peak of its flight, its velocity is 100% horizontal for an instant until it starts to drop. When it drops, that velocity begins to increase because our red arrow, which is representative of our vertical component, is increasing because it and gravity are moving in the same direction. Therefore, it is increasing and we still have that horizontal component that keeps it moving. Okay, so that pretty much sums up all of our ideas. So the main, main idea is that the horizontal component and the vertical component are completely separate from each other, although they're both acting on the same object. So when you move to the calculations, um, you're actually going to treat them as such. You are going to set up everything in an X and Y column and solve all of the horizontal values on one side, and you're gonna solve for all the vertical values on the other side, which is in a completely different video that will be discussed later. Now, both of these are completely different types of motion, but when you combine them, like, you, like I said before, that is the actual projectile itself that you're witnessing is those two components combined. The vertical component gives it its height, and hang time and the vertical or excuse me the horizontal component makes it scoot over sideways as it's gaining that height and moving in the air for that specific period of time all right so that pretty much sums it up those are our big concepts for 2d projectile motion thanks for watching and listening